Jewish people always take their inspiration from the Torah portion of the week. This week we will hear in the synagogues as we begin the book of Vayetze, which begins the words Vayetze Yaakov Iber Shova Vayelech Harana. Our patriarch Jacob, in the middle of his lifetime, left his father's home. He left Be'er Sheva and he went out to Haran, eventually to build a family. And the question is, the book of the Torah is not a book of geography. Every nuance, every letter is important. Why, did God, why does God have to record the fact where he left from and where he was going to? But Haran, as Rashi tells us earlier in the Torah, represents Haron Afshel Mokom. It represents the most challenging place in the world, and that's where Yaakov was able, was going to. In order to withstand the challenges of this place, he had to take the history of Be'er Sheva. And that's what gave him purpose. That's what gave him the might and the strength to go to such a difficult place. What was Be'er Sheva? We read earlier in the Torah that Yaakov's grandfather, Abraham of uh, Abraham Avinu, Abraham, our father, the first Jew, Vayita Eishel be Be'er Sheva. He planted an orchard in Be'er Sheva. What is that all about? Planting orchards? Rashi tells us that what was the orchard? It was a home of hospitality where people were able to eat and to sleep and to get kosher food and to learn Torah. Because the word Eishel is spelled in Hebrew Aleph Shin Lamed. And it stands for Achila and Shtia and Lina or Limud. Yaakov was able to go to Haran because he had the Eishel. He had the Eishel with him. And one of my colleagues years ago pointed out that the words Vayita Eishel, if anyone is familiar with gematria, numerical equivalents of the letters, happen to be the same numerical equivalent as the words Beis Chabad. Yaakov took the Eishel of his grandfather Avram, he went to Haran and he built the Jewish people. Who were the Holzbergs? They left their families in New York and Israel to move halfway around the world. They did not do it for excitement, the money, the fame, or the glory. They did it out of love for the Jewish people as dedicated Hasidim of the Lubavitcher Rebbe. Their home was sought out by business people needing kosher provisions while traveling by tourists from around the world and by many Israelis backpacking across India after completing army service. Each guest was welcomed with open arms, unconditional love and respect. Kosher in India meant that Gabi had to chef a hundred chickens every week and Rifki had to bake 80 loaves of bread, reminiscent of our patriarchs Abraham and Sarah, who welcomed wayfarers, Jews whom they had never met and might never meet again. Gabi and Rifka were there, always with a warm smile, a warm word, and a warm meal. Who were the Holtzbergs? They were. The Abraham and Sarah of our time. Their guests, Rabbi Arya Leibish Teitelbaum, Rabbi Tzion Kromin, Yochebet Orpaz, Norma Schwarzblatt, Rabbi Nevovich, were dedicated service of the Almighty who returned their souls to God in a miniature holy temple in the Haran of our times that was permeated with the smell of the fruit of the orchard of Abraham, our forefather. We hear talk constantly about the war on terror. I'm not a military strategist. I'm not a political scientist. But it seems pretty clear to me that you can't fight terror with guns and rockets. Yes, terrorists must be fought by governments and military and might. But terror? Terror is fought with kindness. Darkness is fought with light. Evil is fought with good. 
And with every fiber of our being, we believe that good is greater and more powerful than evil will ever be. We long for another Hakel gathering. We long for permanent unity and inspiration. We long for the Jewish people to gather in the Holy Temple and hear the Shema Yisrael from the next Jewish king, Mashiach himself. The Medrash says, Moshiach, Moshe rather, the Medrash says, Moshe, who go Rishon, who go Achim. Moshe is the first redeemer and will be the last redeemer. I've always had the question, Moshe was a lady. Mashiach will be from the tribe of Yehuda. Moshe can, was our first leader, but according to the halacha, the Jewish law, Moshe Rabbeinu himself is not eligible to be Mashiach. What does the Medrash mean when it says, who Goel Rishon, he is the first redeemer, and he will be the last redeemer. But the Zohar says, is pashtusa de Moshe becholdara vedara, there's a spark of Moshe in every generation. Who can re remain callous to the call of Meishele Holtzberg, calling Ima? We can bring light in a dark world. We can bring Mashiach. If nine evil men can bring such havoc to the world, we can certainly bring peace. I ask each and every one gathered here today to do an additional mitzvah to emulate the Holtzbergs who every Friday evening in Mumbai would have 30 and 40 people at their Shabbos tables. When's the last time that each one of us went out of our way on a regular basis to invite people into our own homes for Shabbat? Rivki Holtzberg made sure that every Jewish woman would light candles. Tonight as you leave, there will be the Friday light kids. Take one, even if you light candles yourself, which I'm sure everyone does. You certainly know someone who doesn't. Take one of those kits, spread light. This week, Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday, in the Jewish day schools in Chicago, the children wrote letters of consolation to all of the families. And they each one wrote the Hachlata Tova, a good resolution on those notes. I have the notebooks that I will be taking with me to Israel to bring to the families. If our children understand Moshe's cry of Ima, can't we? Is it too difficult for us to fill out a card with a mitzvah to think for a moment of what we can do to change the world for good? We cover our eyes and say Shema. We resolve to make this world a better place. We will then see the ultimate gathering of Jews the world over in peace and health and life. O says Shalom bimromov, hu ya'aseh Shalom, aleinu ve'al ko Yisrael, amen. He who makes peace above shall bring peace to each and every one and all of Israel, and we say, Amen. Amen.